Do you know how old chemistry is? Well, it's about the same age as the United States of America. But before there was chemistry, there was alchemy. And alchemy had some similarities to chemistry, but the differences were much more profound. Alchemy had its roots in old ancient Greek philosophy, a philosophy which stated that there were four elements. Aristotle's first book, first science book back 300 years BC said that the four elements that made up everything were earth, air, fire, and water. Four elements. And all of the variety of materials we see around us are a combination of those four elements. And alchemists used this model to explain everything that they investigated right through the Middle Ages. So the big difference between alchemy and chemistry is that they used ancient models, ancient ideas without verifying their truthfulness. That was one of the big differences between chemistry and alchemy. That led alchemists to believe things like this. If you have a piece of wood, it floats because the combination of materials that go to make up this wood are air and earth, they believed, and there was more air than earth, so it lacked density. The fact that it had more air than earth means it would float in water. Things that had more earth than air would sink in water. And all of the things we see around us are combinations of earth air, fire, and water in different proportions. A neat idea, but it had big problems which weren't discovered until the 1700s, and they were discovered because of the second big difference between chemistry and alchemy. Alchemy never measured any of their results, ever. As a matter of fact, the big divide between alchemy and chemistry came from measurement. As more and more was measured, and old ideas fell away, alchemy withered up and died, and chemistry became all the rage. But alchemists have to be given some credit, because they did do an awful lot of investigation. They continued to use techniques and improve on techniques that were as old as civilization itself, as, as old as 8,000 years. 8,000 years ago, mankind learned how to extract gold, silver, and copper from rocks. The reason these three metals were the first to be extracted from rocks is because they existed largely in pure form. Gold is always found in rocks in pure form. If you go through a gold mine, you can see streaks of gold. Here's an example of gold ore. Silver is much the same. Silver is normally found in its pure form in rocks and in caves. And copper, although not always found in pure form, sticks out because in its impure form, it's usually blue or green, so it sticks out, and furthermore, it doesn't take much heating to produce pure reddish brown golden copper. Now, those techniques were perfected over the centuries, and in about 2000 BC, about 4000 years ago, another ore was discovered, the ore of tin. Now, tin never exists in pure form, but it was discovered by accident about 2,000 years BC that when certain rocks are heated, tin is produced, pure melted tin, which when cooled turned into a lustrous, beautiful metal. The reason tin became so important is because it was discovered when mixed with copper, it produced bronze if it was mixed in just the right proportions. And bronze was an alloy. An alloy is a mixture of two metals an alloy which was much stronger than copper or tin alone and could be used for tools. Gold, silver, and copper were largely used for jewelry and possibly cutlery, but could never be used for tools because they were too soft. Now, with bronze resulting from the combination of tin and copper, mankind had a metal that was strong enough to make tools and weapons with. So we were into the Bronze Age. And it was only two or three hundred years after that that a rock containing iron was discovered. The reason it took so long to discover it is because it had to be heated much hotter than any of the other ores discovered so far. It was discovered by accident, but it's not difficult to do. 
There are several YouTube videos that show iron ore production in people's backyards. One of the videos actually shows how to make an iron ore smelter. It's fascinating. It's something worth looking at. So by the Middle Ages, alchemy had developed to a point where it could produce all sorts of metals and alloys and even non-metallic substances like sulfur and phosphorus. But because they held on to old beliefs without testing them, they could only go so far. But by the middle 1700s, with vastly improved measurement techniques and experimental techniques, some of the old alchemists' ideas started to fall by the wayside, and a new science was developed, a science of chemistry. In the next video, we will show you some experiments done by two amazing scientists, a man named Henry Cavendish and a man named Joseph Priestley, whose work was used by Antoine Lavoisier to develop a whole new science, the science of chemistry. And as chemistry loomed large, alchemy fell by the wayside and became discredited.